Now that we've talked about the basic definition of a democracy, we're going to talk about two types of democracy. And this is all covered under standard SS6 CG4, comparing and contrasting presidential and parliamentary democracies. A presidential democracy is a system of government in which the president is constitutionally independent of the legislature. In contrast, a parliamentary system is a system of government where the executive power is a part of the legislative and lawmaking branch. Now we're going to dive into specific examples of each of these two types of democracy. The first is the presidential democracy. We're very familiar, familiar with the presidential democracy as the United States is considered a presidential democracy. And I have Barack Obama on the left, and he is saying to veto or to pass. He is the executive branch, and he is completely separate from the legislative branch, which would be the United States Congress. So one thing you need to keep in mind with the presidential democracy is the president, the executive branch, is completely separate from the legislative branch. Also, the president is voted in and elected by the people, and so are the legislative members. Our Congress, which is our legislative branch, is composed of the House of Representatives and the Senate, both of which are voted on by constituents of each state. Now, President Obama can say, hey, this law should be made, and he can run and talk to Congress and say, hey, can you write up a bill for this law? Congress, in turn, will write up a bill or say, eh, don't think so. And once they're done writing up the bill, if they decide to, they can send it back to President Obama, who in turn would either sign or not sign the bill. And that would contribute to whether or not the bill is passed. In addition, legislative branch or Congress can also write up bills that they choose to write up based on what their, what local, what needs, whatever laws need to be passed. For example, um, gay marriage is a big one with the different local governments, such as state. With the legislative branch, once they write up the bill, they send it back to the president, and the president will either sign or not sign. So they can write the bills and send it over, or he can ask for the bills to be written and have it sent over for approval. But ultimately, there are two separate components of government. The parliamentary democracy is completely different. They have an executive power, but the executive power is actually a part of that legislative branch. It is um, the prime minister is David Cameron for the United Kingdom. He was the majority ruling party, basically came in and decided to nominate him or, or um, have him step up and lead and become the executive power. Now, when Parliament, which is what the legislative branch is called, or which is part of the legislative branch with Mr. Cameron, when they vote on a law or they're trying to pass a bill, what happens is the Prime Minister votes along with the Parliament. So there's, there's the integration, they're interrelated and the Prime Minister votes on the laws within the legislative branch. With the United States, Barack Obama, completely separate, a separate entity, a separate branch. The Prime Minister, although he is the executive power, he is a part of the legislative branch. Here's our little Parliament members. And um, Parliament also has cabinet members that are appointed we will discuss that further in class. In class, you were given a Venn diagram. If you would go ahead and get that out and begin filling it in. The presidential and parliamentary differences um, that exist, number one, we have we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and apply this to the United States and the United Kingdom and extend that example a little further. 
The United States is a federal democracy. We talked about systems of government. So a federal is when the power is shared. That should be a review. And then the United Kingdom is a unitary. So the, the power is not necessarily shared. The central government is the stronger, has most of the power. So in a presidential democracy, you have the president who is elected by the people in contrast to the parliamentary democracy where the prime minister is not directly voted by the people. In a parliamentary democracy, whichever majority party, which, whichever party has the majority, and the UK has a lot of political parties, the majority party will then appoint a prime minister who is sanctioned by the head of state, which is actually separate from the head of government. So in addition to having an executive power, they also have, or the head of government, they also have a head of state who's more of a figurehead and participates in ceremonial things such as the appointment of prime minister. And that would be Queen Elizabeth II, who is right here. Lovely Queen Elizabeth II. And in a presidential democracy, Congress has no part in the election of the president. So the election that takes place for our president and the election that takes place for our Congress members are completely two separate elections. And with the parliamentary democracy, there's only one election, and that one election selects legislative members of, of parliament, and from parliament or within parliament, the prime minister rises. The prime, like I said, the prime minister is not directly voted but for by the citizens. Also, in a presidential democracy, there are differing political parties for president or Congress, or differing political parties could exist. For example, the president could be a Democrat, and the majority of Congress, or most of the Congress members in the House or the Senate, could be Republican. So you could have a dual power. Power doesn't necessarily reside with one majority party. In a parliamentary democracy, one political party holds the power. Also, an office term. A presidential um, term is considered four years in the United States. So for after four years, we have another election, and we either reelect the current president or we get a new one with a total term being eight years. A person can't serve longer than eight years as the president. In a parliamentary democracy, there is no term or limit. So as long as the prime minister has the confidence and backing of parliament, they can continue to be prime minister for as long as they have that support. In a presidential democracy, the president answers to the people, where in contrast, in a parliamentary, the prime minister would answer to parliament. Now, there are some shared characteristics between a presidential and a par parliamentary democracy. They are both representative democracies, and we talked about representative democracies previously, and a representative democracy is where people vote on someone to go and represent their ideas or their beliefs in government. And both parliamentary and presidential have that characteristic. They vote for parliament, they both vote for legislative members, and then in a presidential democracy, we also have a separate election for our president. Head of state, we both have, they both have head of state, president, prime minister, it doesn't matter what it's called, or actually, president, and um, Queen Elizabeth would be the head of state, but the figurehead. But they both have executive powers as well, the president or the prime minister. A bicameral form of government also exists in both democracies, and they are also ruled by a constitution. I hope this helps with your differentiating between a presidential and parliamentary democracy, and good luck on your upcoming exam.